In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve this tricky dilution calculations question from one of our viewers and we are starting right now. Hello, this is Dr. Dankwa and if this is your first time here and you like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and strategies then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So if you need a more comprehensive tutorial on dilution calculations or you simply want to see more solved examples on dilution calculations, then I'm going to put a link to a playlist in the description and I'm going to link it in the cards as well. But let's get right to this question. The question says you have in your pharmacy a cream containing 0.5% weight by weight hydrocortisone. You have been requested to use this cream as a base and to add in sufficient calamine such that the final concentration of calamine in the new cream will be 10% weight by weight. What is the concentration of hydrocortisone in the new cream? So this being a dilution calculations question, there are typically two ways you can actually solve this question. I'm going to show you how to use both approaches to solve it and then you have the flexibility of deciding which approach you prefer. Now the first approach that we want to use is the algebraic method. Now that involves using a simplified version of the generalized algebraic equation depending on the number of components that you're mixing. But before we get to the equation, let's actually do a quick analysis of what the question is asking. The ultimate goal is to prepare a calamine cream which has a concentration of 10%. However, the question is actually asking for the concentration of hydrocortisone. So you want to note that distinction and you need to understand how both parameters come into play when it comes to the solution for this question. So having said that, we want to start off with the simplified version of the generalized algebraic equation. We have two components here. We are mixing calamine and we are mixing the 0.5% hydrocortisone to get the final concentration of 10% weight by weight calamine in the final preparation. And so that means we will have two components. And so the form of the equation that we want to use is C1Q1 plus C2 Q2 equals C final Q final. Now here the C1 is the concentration of the first component. Q1 is the quantity of the first component. C2 is the concentration of the second component. Q2 is the quantity of the second component. And CF is the concentration of the final product. And QF is the quantity of the final product. Now, in this question, we can designate the calamine as the first component and designate the 0.5% weight by weight hydrocortisone as the second component. There are a few things that are implied in the question that we want to glean and deduce and use in terms of the interpretation of what C1 is, Q1 is, and so on and so forth. So because our first component here is calamine, then the C1, which is the concentration of calamine, needs to be known and it's not stated explicitly in the question but there's an implication here because it says calamine the assumption here is it is pure calamine and because it's pure calamine has nothing else in it then the concentration will be 100 percent now the quantity is q1 we don't know what the quantity is so we can still designate that as q1 then we can move on to the second component the second component is 0.5 percent weight by weight hydrocortisone now the concentration here actually refers to the concentration of calamine in the second component and because you are using the 0.5% weight by weight hydrocortisone as a base, it actually means that there is no calamine in this component. So the concentration here will be 0%. So here again, Q2 which is the quantity of the second component is not stated so we'll just leave that as Q2 as well. Now for the final concentration, we've been told in the question that is 10%, so that's going to be 10%. And then QF, which is the quantity of the final product, is not given, so we can keep that as QF. But it's important to note that QF is going to be equal to the sum of Q1 and Q2. So we would use this expression down the line as we continue with our solution. So now we can actually go ahead and substitute some of this information into the original equation. And so for C1, we have 100. So we can put 100 times Q1 plus 
C2, which is 0, times Q2, that's going to be equal to CF, which is 10, times QF. Now, QF is given as Q1 plus Q2. So we can go ahead and put Q1 plus Q2. We can go ahead and do a quick simplification. So we'll end up with 100 Q1 plus 0 times any number goes to 0. So this will go to 0. So plus 0. And that's going to be equal to 10 times Q1 and then 10 times Q2. You can distribute the 10 over Q1 and Q2. So that will give us 10 times Q1 will be 10 Q1 plus 10 times Q2 gives us 10 Q2. So we can go ahead and subtract 10 Q1 from both sides. So end up with 100 Q1 minus 10 Q1. That's going to be equal to 10 Q2. So with further simplification, we'll have 100 Q1 minus 10 Q1. And that gives us 90 Q1 being equal to 10 Q2. So what we need here actually is to determine Q2 because that would allow us to know later on how much hydrocortisone is actually in this Q2 and then we can express that as a percentage down the line. So we can divide both sides by 10 and that would imply that now Q2 is equal to 9Q1. So we still have a variable but that's sufficient. We will later on go ahead and express that as a percentage. And so how that will work then is the next step is to actually determine how much hydrocortisone is present in Q2 and then we'll use that information to find the percentage concentration in the new cream. So the way we approach that is to make use of the concentration because it's 0.5%. So that implies you have 0.5 grams of hydrocortisone and 100 grams. And we want to figure out how many grams will be in Q2. But we want to use the equivalent of Q2 in Q1. And that's because we'll be making use of this Q1 later on down the line. So the best way to do that is to put the 9Q1 here instead of the Q2. And then go ahead and solve for X. X is going to be equal to 0.5 grams times 9Q1 divided by 100 grams. And that's going to be equal to 0.045Q1. So once again, this 0.045Q1 is the amount of hydrocortisone that is present in the Q2. And that's actually how much of hydrocortisone we present in the new cream that we just made. So we want to express this as a percentage strength. And so the way we do that is to take the 0.045Q1 and divide that by the final quantity. Now the final quantity is actually Q1 plus Q2. And so we can go ahead and just put in what Q1 is here. So Q1 is still Q1 and Q2 is 9Q1 which means you have 10 Q1. All right, so we're going to use the 10 Q1 as our total. So that'll be 10 Q1. And now this should be equal to some quantity in grams over 100 grams. So the right-hand side, actually, when we solve for Y, will give us the percentage strength. So we can go ahead and solve for Y. Y is going to be equal to 0.045 Q1 times 100 grams divided by... 10 q1 and so here you notice that the q1 will cancel out and that's why we were strategic in expressing everything in q1 so now we can go ahead and multiply everything in the numerator and divide by what's the denominator and that's going to be equal to 0.45 percent so now let's take a look at how you can use the allegation method to solve the same question now with the allegation method you want to start off with your grid so you want to construct two vertical lines and then also have two horizontal lines and the way the allegation method works is the higher concentration goes to the top left the lower concentration goes to the bottom left and your desired concentration is in the middle now if you need a more comprehensive tutorial on allegation methods or you want to see more examples where you use the allegation method to solve dilution calculation questions and I'm going to put a link to a playlist in the description. And I'm also going to link it in the cards as well. But let's get right to how you can use this allegation method to solve this problem. So we need to identify what the concentrations are that we need to put on this grid. So now let's go ahead and fill the grid. We need the higher concentration which will go to the top left. And the higher concentration here will be the concentration of calamine. So because it's pure calamine, then the concentration is going to be 100%. So that will go to the top left. 
and then the concentration of the base which is given as 0.5 percent hydrocortisone even though there's a concentration given we are focusing on the api of interest here and that is calamine so since there's no calamine in the hydrocortisone then the concentration will be zero so we put zero in the bottom left our desired concentration of calamine is 10 percent so that goes in the middle and so the next thing that we need to determine is the parts of the 0% or of the 0.5% weight by weight hydrocortisone base. And the way that will work is you take the desired concentration, which is 10, and subtract that from the higher concentration, which is 100. So 10 minus 100 equals 90. And that goes to the bottom right. So we have 90 in the bottom right. And the 90 represents the number of parts of the base or the 0.5% weight by weight hydrocortisone in this preparation. We also need to determine the number of parts of the calamine, the pure calamine. And the way we do that is to take the lower concentration, which is 0, subtract that from the desired, which is 10. So 10 minus 0 equals 10. And the 10 goes to the top right. And the 10 represents the number of parts of your pure calamine. So now the way the question is framed, you also need to determine the total parts. So for total parts, we want to take the parts of the pure calamine, which is 10, and add that to the parts of the base, which is 90. And so the total part is going to be 100. That's significant because the total parts correlates with the total quantity. Now from the question, we were not given the total quantity, but to make our computation easier, we need to assume a total quantity. So we would assume a total quantity equal to 200 grams. Now this can be any quantity. It doesn't really matter because your ratios will stay the same. That's your number of parts will stay the same. So it doesn't matter what quantity you take. But for ease of computation, we're going to settle on 200 grams. Now, this is significant because by determining the total quantity, we can actually calculate or compute how much of the total quantity is represented by the base. So to do that, we will take the parts of the base or the parts of the 0.5% weight by weight hydrocortisone, which is 90, divide that by the total parts, which is 100. And then we can multiply that by the total quantity, which is 200 grams here. And that should give 180 grams. So what that means is to make a 200 gram preparation of this cream, we would need 180 grams of the base or the 0.5% weight by weight hydrocortisone. This is also important because by knowing this quantity, we can actually determine how much hydrocortisone is present in the 180 grams. And so the way we approach that is to take the percentage concentration, which is 0.5, and that would imply that you have 0.5 grams divided by 100 grams, and that should be equal to some quantity in grams divided by the 180 grams. We can go ahead and solve for X, which is the unknown, and so X is going to be equal to 0.5 grams times 180 grams divided by 100 grams and that is actually equal to 0.9 grams so let's talk about this for a minute the 0.9 grams is the actual amount of hydrocortisone that is present in the 180 grams but it's also the same amount that is present in the total quantity which is the 200 grams so we, what we are interested in is the concentration of the hydrocortisone in the new cream and the quantity of the new cream is 200 grams. So we can make a statement that this 0.9 grams is present in 200 grams. Hence, how many grams will be present in 100 grams? And on the right hand side, this ratio that we just put down is the interpretation of what percentage strength weight by weight is. So if you go ahead and solve for Y, whatever that value is will be our percentage strength. And so Y will be equal to 0.9 grams times 100 grams divided by 200 grams. The grams cancel out, some of the zeros cancel out and actually end up with 0.45%. So this value is exactly the same as what we got using the algebraic method. And so you would expect that because the answer should be the same. So I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you did, be sure to like it and share it. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. If you'd like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and strategies, 
then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.